Hello everybody, hope you're doing well, Alexandre Benmar back with you after a short while. This week, a podcast in multiple parts, the main subject, how to set up and configure Microsoft Office to use it with a screen reader that's applied to Microsoft Office 365 and 2016. Then I'd like to cover a couple of news about assistive technologies with you, a new update of the Focus 5th generation, new driver for the Pearl camera, and new features for the KNFB Reader app on iOS and some precision about CMEI. Enjoy! Before we begin talking about the main subject of this podcast, which is the configuration of Office 2016 and 365, I would like to give you some interesting news about what's going on regarding assistive technologies and what have changed and recent updates. So first of all, I'd like to talk about a Freedom Scientific product, and I'm talking about the Focus 5th generation. For those who have purchased this unit recently, please note that a firmware upgrade has been launch and this upgrade is specially to correct bug it's not an update that will include new functionalities it's specially to correct some bug however please note that if this upgrade changed the way you'll have to navigate into the internal menu of the focus 40 or 14 fifth generation Usually, if you'd like to navigate into the internal menu, the simplest way will be to use the pan button. What are pan buttons? These are the button with an arrow on them that allows you to go next or previous the number of characters you have on your build display. So let's say that you have a focus 40. If you want to go forward 40 characters, you'll use pan right. Or if you want to go previous 40 characters, you'll use the pan left button. Previously to this upgrade, these button were used also to navigate inside the internal menu. Right now, you'll need to use the rocker bar. What are the rocker bars? These are the long bars you'll find on the front of the focus. It's up and down keys. So if you want to go to the next item, you'll need to press it down. If you want to go to the previous item, you'll need to press it up. So that's one of the major change this version brings. And also they have corrected some issue regarding certain languages like French, where some bad translation were there. They also correct a couple of issues regarding chord commands and the review the test mode of this version. So if you want to install this version, I'll suggest you to go on freedomscientific.com. I'll put the firmware soon also on kennydialog.com and the download section of our website under support, download, and hardware material. And then you'll be able to download the latest firmware. You'll need to install it via an USB connection. And please make sure that the focus is securely connected and make sure to follow the instruction. This firmware is not designed for a focus 4th gen. It's especially designed for a focus 5th gen. So if you're doing the upgrade on a focus 4th gen, that's not a good idea. It can break the focus unit. So be sure to have the focus that was launched this year. Another great news regarding Freedom Scientific product is the fact that a new driver has been released for the Pearl camera. So if you are having a Pearl camera or any kind of camera that can connect to a computer from Freedom Scientific, they launch a new driver called the Direct Show Bridge. And what this driver allows you to do is to use your camera from Freedom Scientific with other application than Freedom Scientific application. So that's something really, really interesting. And then it will allow you to scan with KNFB Reader directly from your Pearl camera. However, at this time, they are having a couple of issues with the 
camera light they should fix it as soon as they can i think however this is something really interesting so if you're planning to purchase a pearl camera or i think also the onyx camera can be connected to a computer that is something that you may consider now when purchasing the camera yes now you'll have the possibility to use it with other application than the freedom apps talking about knfp reader they launch a new version on ios so it was launched i think last week and this version brings a new a complete new interface and i'll show it to you in a couple of seconds i'll show it to you very quickly just before we did previously a podcast about ocr technologies that were available on mobile so i'd like to show you the new interface and what are the best thing with this new interface what they fix for voiceover however i'm actually having a bug with this version and voiceover we'll see a bit later what it is they also implement a lot of new feature regarding low vision users so if you're having a low vision they launch a couple of new feature that will allow you to better follow what you're reading by highlighting and things like this and also knfb now allows you to read epub format and previously to this version it was possible to synchronize knfb reader with a dropbox account now it is possible to do it with a onedrive as well as a google drive account so if you are not using dropbox would like to synchronize some files it's going to be possible to do so so they made a lot a lot a lot of changes on the ios version the windows version as well as the android version are not they did not receive any updates now so i think you'll need to wait a little bit to see these updates on android as well as windows however i'll go ahead right now and show you a bit the new interface of knfb knfb reader so actually i'm having an iphone 6s take picture to button. demo double and tap to take a picture of your document now we are still in the take picture Tilt guidance switch button I'll on just... multi fla fla flash on button okay perfect i swipe left a couple of times just to make sure to be in the first icon of the window first icon now is the flash icon before that it was like the setting and things like this as well as i think the file explorer so now they remove all of this i'll go ahead and swipe right and we'll check the screen together multi-page mode off but tilt guidance switch button on take picture button so this is similar Double tap to field of view report button to what double we tap to report the camera position relative to the document we're having previously text recognition language button so french Oops, okay, how good and text change this by the French clicking. picker item right in English. Text recognition text recognition language. English done button. Okay, perfect. So they change this a bit. Take picture button. And tilt guidance. I'll just Switch remove button the on. Off. Tilt guidance for the microphone. It's gonna be better because it's vibrating all the time. Take picture and field of viewer text recognition language. Multi column button. Okay, so the multi column Mul manual picture button. Selected camera tab one of five and yeah manual, manual picture, picture. it's because you'll have three choices you'll have the manual the auto and the uh, stand so if you're using a stand to put your iPhone iPad on it you'll have the possibility to select a specific mode i think previously it was a adjustable value that you can flick up and down now it's a button each time you'll click it will toggle between available pictures mode and then if i swipe right selected camera tab one of five have tabs in the bottom of the screen red tab two of five 
Files, tab, 3 of 5, Settings, tab, 4 of 5, Help, tab, 5 of 5. So that's a real new interface and no more main menu buttons with all this information here. So when opening the apps, you'll have multiple tabs that will be right available for you. Let's say that I'll go ahead and click the settings. Settings, tab, four or five, settings, there heading. You. Apply default settings for settings. Apply default settings for users of the voice and over screen reader. Add button. a lot of Apply new default settings for all other settings. users. Camera settings, button, reader settings, button, file list settings, button, about, button. And Double they tap are to all buttons. File list so settings, let's button. say that I want to go into file list settings. File list settings, file list settings, Double heading, clicking. ask confirmation on and remove, switch button, o display file type, switch button, o Dropbox connection, switch button, o Google Drive connection, switch button, off. Here they are. One Drive connection, switch button, off. Camera tab, one Here of five. Here they are. So let camera, me go tab, back to one the of five. camera tab. I just want to grab a picture to show you something. Give me just one second. I'll just grab something right here. Here we go. And so I'll place my phone at the center, like usual, same thing. Uh, I'll try to catch all the text because I have a lot of thing and I have the cable that attached the iPhone to the mixer. Take picture button, take picture dimmed. Save file button. Alexandra has been employed by Kinetiolog since 2014. He has been working as an adaptive technology instructor okay, and a technical so IT supervisor great. for Braille products. Right now, for which he acts as our resource reading. person. I'll double tap with two fingers to stop reading. And then we'll go ahead and explore a bit the screen together. And so we'll be able to see what has changed. Save file, save file button. So now the first option to save the at the top of the screen is the option to save the file. I'll flick right. Switch reader to PDF view button. And this Double. is a view for sighted person or partially sighted person would like to highlight some text and it seems to be a better view for person who has a low vision. English Alex button. So double that's where we'll go and select the voice. Speed 50% button. So here it is for speed selection. Add page button. To add a new page. Reading unit button. This is to change if you want to read by sentence, line, word, etc. Read continuously button. Double tap to switch between continuously reading and self paced reading. So here's an option that allows you to switch between two modes. I don't know at this time because it's uh, new for me too. What is the self paced reading? So maybe I'll have a check about this into the help section. It seems to be an option to turn off the say how feature let's say it like this image button to see double. the image redo text recognition button to double tap to recognize this document again redo the recognition alexandra and then if i flick right listen to has this. been employed by canadian log since 2014 among and here's others, the bug that he has it's causing working for each word and of the text adaptive technology it is separate however if i flick down with two fingers technology instructor and a technical rt supervisor for braille products for which he acts as our resource person it's working however if i continue flicking right go to page button specialist i'm accessibility web completely out of the track that's a bit strange if you'd like to use this to search for particular information in the text or if you want to skip all the text by just swiping it's going to be a bit 
disturbing and for sure if certified you are on a word headings containers volume speaking rate word. lines words oh there we go if i flick down certified i can't go to the next word like this so i'll absolutely have to flick right web and then web and then if i web. want to spell it by characters characters w e b that's it so that's a bit strange anyway maybe they'll fix this in a future release who knows but uh this is something that uh, you need to be aware of that so accessibility I'll continue specialist flicking. Right. Go to page. Previous sentence. Button. So go to page. Play. Button. Next sentence. Button. Full screen. Button. Camera. That's tab. One of five. Full screen. Similar button. to Double tap what to display. we had before. Just go ahead and click on full screen just to see. Play. Button. Next reading unit. Solutions. And is. And it's exactly the same thing for, for voiceover if we're using the full screen. So return let's... from full neck play neck return from full screen button return okay. from full screen button I'll remove this so save file it's but... only a low vision feature and then while navigating the text Camera, I still tab. have Le my tabs at the bottom of the screen so selected if I'd red like tab to files tab select go Camera, back tab. into the one of five tab. selected selected oh I uh, want to go back in my file. I don't want to take a take picture, picture right button. now. Select red tab. I can two of five. Click on the red. Responsible for for sales. He holds a bachelor's degree in computer science and and my text is back. Or I can just double tap with two fingers. Is engaged in the development of new adaptive solutions and, and is responsible for sales. The can if be reading feature that finished to read the text. So that's something really interesting regarding the new interface however a couple of bugs are remaining regarding voiceover I, I think they are putting a bit more energy about low vision features instead of voiceover in this version so please take note of this another thing that i'd like to discuss with you regarding ocr is the fact that when we record the podcast about mobile OCR technologies, we've talked about Sing AI, the application developed by Microsoft. And when we talk about it, we mentioned that it was not possible to export scanned text with this application. And yes, it is possible to do so in two different ways. Thank you to Louis Fortin, a listener of our podcast, who mentioned me this information. So thanks to Louis Fortin again. So I'll just go ahead and open the Seeing AI and show you the two possibilities. Seeing AI. Menu button. Right now. Quick help. Pause. Announce. Channel. Short text. Adjust. I'm into the short text channel. And before I'll raise my phone over the document, VoiceOver has a feature that allows to copy into the clipboard the last spoken text. How to do this? You'll have to perform a credible tap. So four tap with three finger. One, two, three, four, like this. During the time, voiceover is reading the text. And then you'll have the possibility to go and paste the text in a text editor on your iPhone to keep a copy of what you've just can. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and raise my phone and show you in a live demo how to perform this action. Ooh, can a dialogue? is dedicated to a single passion of contributing to the well-being with visual impairments by providing high quality low right vision now bra. it's reading i'll first pause the reading with two finger tap so two finger single tap and then so it's going to be easier to explain you i'll perform the three finger quadruple tap one two three four 
Utina dialogue is dedicated to a single passion of contributing to the well-being with visual impairments by repeating the text. I'll pause it again. At the end of the text, you should hear that the text has been copied into the clipboard. So I'll press the home button CAI. right now. Voice dream. Oops, again. Double tapped messages. And Three unread messages. Calendar. Photo. Cam. Maps. Clock. Weather. I'll stocks. Go wallet. Into notes. 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 New note button. I'll go ahead and Double tap create a note. new text note. field is editing insertion point at start. I'm actually in the text field and then I'll turn the rotor. Edit. Until I'll reach headed. There we go. And then I'll flick down. Paste. Here's the paste button. Double click. Ooh, can a dialogue is dedicated to a single passion of contributing to the well being with visual impairments by providing high quality low vision and bra. Ions through innovative products and accessible services. We want tea. Life is your life for. Okay, so yeah, it was a short text capture, so it may miss a bit of text, but now you can see that characters. If I notes. go ahead and Add heap. share click note done button done done share note note innovative My product note. share note button. Note notes back button. back there notes heading edit search Utina dialogue is dedicated to a single passion o 9 33 p.m. to the well being with visual impairments by proven actions available. So okay now it's not reading the entire note because I'll need to click on the note to be able to read the entire note. But you can see that yes it is possible to keep what we've just can using the short text channel. I'll go back into seeing AI. App switcher. No, seeing AI and active. I'll show you the Menu other button. way to export some text. So I'll go ahead and channel, channel short text, select adjustable. the document channel. Document. There we go. Take picture button. I'll place no edges visible. the focus on take picture. I'll place the iPhone at the center of the document. I'll go ahead and double click. No edges visible. Take picture. Processing. Back button. We should have the Scanners document off. right Heading. now. Play button. Stop button. Increase font size. But deep share. But share. Deep ink. Stop play I'll button. I'll try to click play. Play. Back in the dialogue and the dialogue is dedicated to a single passion of contributing to the well-being eopal with visual impairments. Pause. But stop. Okay. Pause. Okay. Stop. Okay. But stop. stop. Perfect. And then Incre decrease I have share a button. share button. Share button. So I'll click on share. this one. Alert. Share image button. Share text button. So I have two options that we did not talk about. So cancel. Share image and share text. Cancel. Or cancel. But share text. So button. let's go ahead and click share text. Cancel button. Tap to share with AirDrop. So to share the text with AirDrop. Message button. Draggable. Send via message. Mail button. Mail. Draggable. Add to notes button. Add Draggable. To note. Twitter button. Facebook. Dropbox. But more button. I'll skip Dropbox here because it's not the one that I'm looking for. Copy button. Save to Dropbox button. Save Draggable. to Dropbox. I'll double click on this one. If you don't have this option available, please go ahead and click more and you'll have the possibility to turn on this option in your settings. So I'll Click this. Choose a folder. Right. Save location. Heading. File 2018 05 so 07 PM. TXT. The name text field. Of the file Double tap to edit. Right here. File. Heading. Save. File. Save location. So heading. Save Choose a folder. Location. Choose a folder. Seems Cancel. Okay. Save. Dimmed. But oh, no, save. File. file save in. location. Choose a folder. Choose a folder. Choose a fo Dropbox. All heading. right. Cancel. 123. Cancel. I'll choose. Just choose. Button. Select my main, choose. My main Dropbox Cancel. Button. folder. There save to go. Dropbox. Heading. Save. And button. Then if I click save. Save. Uploading. Then it's save. Uploading. Back. Button. Okay, there we go. So that's just to show you that's another computer who prompt me that I've 
just had a file to my Dropbox. Yes, this computer is in French. And so now I have a TXT file that was added to my Dropbox account. And I'm ready to go with my smartphone or any other computers and grab this file and read it. Now let's talk a bit about how to set up Microsoft Office 365 or 2016. So I'll first go ahead and open Microsoft Office Word. Word. Enter. By the way, I'm actually using an Hellbrill computer. And so you'll have the possibility to see at the same time how it's working. And we'll go ahead and open Word for the first time together. And I'll show you how to set up Word for better result with a screen reader. Opening dash Word. Backstage view. New group box. Recent. Recent. All right. Featured list box. And now Blank document. we are one of one. And to move to an item, press the arrow keys. The backstage view that is prompting us to select a model for the new document that we'd like to create. I'm not interested about this selector, so I'll just press escape. Escape. And we'll document see. one dash word. Okay, so there we document go. Document one. Actually, Print view. Edit. I am in a new document one, and we'll see how to remove this view when starting word, as well as changing some other options. Before I'll go and open the options menu, I'd like to tell you that what we're doing here is applicable to major Office application. So I'm talking about Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. It does not apply to Outlook, which is completely another thing. Maybe we'll talk about how to use Outlook for contact management, email, or calendar in a separate podcast, if some of you are interested to learn more about this. Just go ahead and let me know. So I'll, first of all, I'll make sure the ribbon is properly expanded by pressing Control F1. Control F1. Ribbon collapsed. Okay, so now it's collapsed. I'll press it again. Control F1. Ribbon expanded. So before doing anything in Office, please make sure that the ribbon is properly expanded. Then I'll press Alt F to open the file menu. Alt F. Backstage view. File. Open tab. To and navigate among I'll backstage. T like Tango to access the option dialog. T. Leaving menus. Categories list box word options. Display. Two of eleven. So let's go ahead and first start with general. I don't know why we are on the second item, so I'll press up arrow. General. And then we'll go ahead and press tab and check the option that we'll have to change here. Tab. Optimize for best appearance radio button checked. To change the select. You can leave this alone. Tab. Show many toolbar on selection checkbox checked. To click tab. Enable live preview checkbox checked. Tab. That's Update okay. document content while dragging checkbox checked. Tab. Screen tip style combo box. Show feature disc. Tab. Username edit. The tab. option initials that edit. Will e shift tab. Have a look. Username yes. edit. First Braille. of all, type in these two options. So if you'd like to create professional documents and put them online, please make sure that the username is corresponding to your real name. So it's going to be more professional. Tab. Initials edit. And e. same, th same thing for initials. So actually, I'll leave them alone because this is a demo computer. So when creating documents, the name on these document will be Hellbrill. Tab. Always use these values regardless of sign into Office. Tab. That's okay. Office theme combo box. Colorful. Tab. We don't care. Enable services checkbox. Tab. About intelligent services. Le tab. Privacy statement. Tab. Enable LinkedIn features in my Office applications checkbox checked. Oh, if you want to uncheck Space. this one, you Not can checked. because 
Uh, this is not a really useful option. Tab. About LinkedIn features but link. But it's not affecting tab. the accessibility. Manage LinkedIn account as tab. Default programs dot 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 button. Okay. If you're having some issues with file association, you can go there and change tab. this. Tell me if Microsoft Word isn't the default program for viewing and editing documents. Checkbox checked. If you're using multiple text editor, you may need to uncheck this one if Word is not your default one. Otherwise, you'll receive a notification each time you'll open Word to make it your default text editor. Tab. Open email attachments and other unditable files in reading view checkbox tab. That's okay. Show the start screen when this application starts checkbox checked. And we'll go ahead and uncheck this one. So show Show the start screen the when this application starts checkbox when checked. This application starts. Space. Not so checked. By unchecking this, each time you'll go ahead and open the word, you'll be placed directly in a new document instead of the layout chooser. Tab. Show names on presence flags check tab. OK button tab. Perfect. Tab. General. So one of eleven. I'm back selected into to move to the an item category list. I'll go down and we'll select display the proofing. save. Save. We don't have anything to change in the other categories. Tab. Auto save one drive and SharePoint online files by default on Word checkbox checked. Tab. Save files in this format combo box. Word document left paren star dot. So here you can go ahead and change the format you'd like to save file by default. I'm still tab. using tab. Save auto recover information every checkbox checked. That's very useful to leave this one check. So if you're working on a file, you're having a crash, Word can save your file automatically after a certain period of time. Tab. Minutes edit spin box. 10. Tab. And here's the number of minutes that Word process automatically the auto save. So every 10 minutes, it's going to save a copy of your document. Personally, I'll Low a bit this value. Two. Let's put two. Minutes edit spin box. Two. Type in text. It's going to be better. However, if you're not having a computer with a lot of resources, it can degrade a bit performance. Tab. Keep the last auto recovered version if I close without saving checkbox checked. That's not a bad idea. So if you close Word by accident, you forgot to click save. And you click don't save and oh crap, I destroyed my important document. You'll have the possibility to recover it. Tab. Auto recover file location edit. C colon backslash users backslash user backslash app data backslash roaming backslash Microsoft backslash word backslash type in text. So here's Alt plus R. where files are saved. If you're having a crash. Tab. Browse dot 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 tab. Don't show the backstage when opening or saving files checkbox not checked. Many of you are having issues to save file using the control S command. Your some of you are pressing the F12 key because the control S view has changed since a couple of version of office. We'll fix this right here. So first of all, I'll uncheck this option. Don't show the backstage when opening or saving files checkbox not checked. So don't show the backstage view when opening or saving. Space. Checked. I'll check this one. So I don't want to see the backstage view. Tab. Tab. Show additional places for saving, even if sign dash in may be required. Checkbox checked. I'll remove this too. So you'll be sure to all the time safe on your computer. Space. Not checked. Don't worry, even by unchecking this, you'll have the possibility to select your OneDrive by going into your user folder, then selecting the OneDrive, even if it's not shown into the backstage view. Tab. Save to computer by default checkbox not checked. And space. I'll checked. check this one too. So each time you're saving a document, the default folder should be your document folder. Tab. 
Default local file location edit. Here we go. D colon backslash users backslash user backslash documents backslash. Here we go. So this is the document folder by default. You'll have the possibility to change this as well. Tab. Browse dot tab. Default and personal templates location edit. Tab. We don't care Learn more about tab. this. Server drafts tab. Preserve fidel tab. I'll continue Embed font pressing tab, tab okay, until tab. I'll be Canceled back to tab. the category Save. list. Tab. Oops. Shift there tab. we go. Save. Forum. And the other really important options that we'll go ahead and change, you can also change some options in other category if you'd like. But here in this podcast, I'd like to show you the most common option that you'll have to change to improve the accessibility of Word with a screen reader and make it easier for you. So I'll go down. Language. Ease of access. Advanced. Customize ribbon. Quick access toolbar. Add dash ins. Trust center. And the trust center. Just before we go there, regarding the toolbar, you can yes had some shortcut there or regarding the ribbon if you're not using some group into the ribbon would like to hide them you'll have the possibility to do so regarding the ease of access maybe i'll have a look to it later however it's not crucial when using just tab microsoft trustworthy computing link tab Trust center settings dot 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 button. Let's go into the trust center setting. Word options dialog. Categories and list box trust center. Macro settings. Going down. Protected view. What is the protected view? The protected view is a mode that Word will enable if you're trying to open a document from an email that you've just received or if you download a document on the web. And the protected view disables some feature in the document and may cause some issue reading these documents with a screen reader. So I'll suggest you to disable this protected view so i'll press tab here tab. enable protected view for files originating from the internet checkbox checked space on checked. not checked tab enable protected view for files located in potentially unsafe locations checkbox checked on check space pressing space not checked. Bar. tab enable protected view for outlook attachments checkbox checked space on check not checked. pressing space tab okay button to and activate press then we can press and document on one dash word okay. microsoft word trust center word options trust center settings dot 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 button tab. and okay we'll button go ahead and validate okay Print view. again edit so now the protected view has been disabled and you'll not be stuck if you're trying to open some document that are coming from emails or from the web if I try to press Control S from here, Control S, save as dialog, file name colon, edit combo, doc one dot docs. You'll see that tab. it's the edit. whole Type in. save shift dialog tab. that you're used to it. So if I press Shift Tab, a couple of times, then backspace. Exp desktop. It's gonna be pictures. possible to select De the upper part. Dossiers folder. left parent. Desktop. So let's select. The desktop. shell folder view tab item tab file name colon edit combo then I doc one dot docs put the name of my file then press enter and escape save print my view file so that's the dialog that you are used to work with let's go into the view tab of the ribbon just want to show you a couple of things there. upper ribbon group box help tab Add dash ins tab, view tab. Great, I'll press down here, down arrow. Lower ribbon, view group box, views group box, read mode button to move through the con I'll press tab. Tab, print layout button checked. And please make sure that the print layout is checked all the time. So if you're not in print layout, you may experience some issue with your screen reader. Tab, web layout button, tab. Outline button, tab, draft button. I'm pressing tab. tab. Immersive group box, learning tools button, tab, 
Page movement group box tab. And side to side button. Regarding tab. show group box. Ruler checkbox not checked. So regarding the show panel, please make sure that the ruler is not checked. Actually, it is not. Ruler checkbox not checked tab. Grid lines um, checkbox not checked. Same thing move for this one. Tab. And navigation pane navigation checkbox pain, not checked. Pane, to please make sure to remove this as well. Tab. Zoom group box. Regarding zoom dot dot the dot button. Zoom. Leaving menu bar. There. Edit. Zoom dialog. Zoom to. Please make sure to select either 75% or 100%. Usually default value at 100% is perfect for the screen reader. However, if you're having some issues, you can try it out with 75%. Escape. Pressing escape Print there. view. And so you can perform the exact same action we just did in Word, in Excel, and as well as in PowerPoint. Maybe that some feature will not be available. However, for the features that are, you may do exactly the same thing. It's going to improve the experience you're having with Microsoft Office. If you're using a Braille display, I'd like to show you a setting inside JAWS that you may turn on. It's going to be something that will help you reading long block of text, especially in Word. So I'll press insert six to open settings center. Word dash jaw settings center dialog. Here we go. Search box edit and type in text. We can change this setting only for Word. If you'd like to change it by default, press control shift D. Here I'll go ahead and change it only for Word. Pressing tab. tab tree view. B. Well, Braille. Press B Close. for Braille. Braille. Open. Then Level 1. General. Going closed. Down. I'll general. Open general. Level 2. Translation closed. Braille mode structured. Panning closed. Active cursor follows Braille display not checked. And please make sure to check active cursor follow Braille. Space. Checked. Braille cursor follows active cursor checked. And please make sure that this option Braille cursor follows active cursor checked. Braille cursor follows active is also checked. Sometime if you're reading text and one of these options not checked, you may see the bottom of the window with the Braille display and be unable to pen again. So please make sure that these two options are properly tab. checked. Pressing Read only tab. Edit. tab. Apply button. And Enter. I'll click Tree there view. on apply tab. to Read confirm tab. the okay, change button. I've made. Enter. And enter finally. Document one dash word. And then we're back in Word document. Talking about Microsoft Office, I'd like to mention you an issue that we've had with Excel recently. You can have some difficulties reading what you're typing in Braille inside Excel. So let's say, for example, that you open an Excel document, you select a cell, you're trying to type new block of text or to edit what is already in the cell by pressing F2. You may encounter a bug where it's not going to be possible to read what's counting the cell. They fixed this issue in the latest version of just 2018. So if you're not up to date, Please make sure to update your JAWS screen reader to the latest version of 2018 that may fix the issue. If you are working in an Excel document that is in your Dropbox folder and if Dropbox is turned on, you may for a strange reason still experience this issue. So to prevent this, please make sure either to Turn off the Dropbox application by pressing insert F11, selecting Dropbox, and then quit Dropbox, or just move your document in a different folder. So that's an actual bug if you're using JAWS 18. However, there's no 
actual way, I think, to solve it. If you're using NVIDIA, it's not going to affect only the Braille. It's going to affect either Braille and speech. There's no fix at this time. So this is a bug, a common bug, if you are running Microsoft Office 365. Another issue that you can have is in the PowerPoint document, if you're trying to launch the slider view by pressing F5, you may experience a bug where you're not going to be able to read the slide using up and down arrow. If it's happened, press escape F5 until you'll be able to read the contents of your document. So you may need to repeat the procedure a couple of times before being able to read what you're trying to read inside the PowerPoint document. So just press Escape F5, try to read, not working, Escape F5, try to read, Escape F5. Usually after two or three tries, you should be okay to read what you'd like. If for sure you're running the latest version of JAWS, which is the version, the April version, so 2018, let's JAWS check. version 2018.1804.26 ILM. So 2018.1804.26 that is available through the Freedom Scientific website or Kini Dialog 1. This is it for today. If you're having other suggestion of what we can change in Microsoft Office to improve the use of it, please give us a call or send us an email. We'll be more than happy to discuss with you. And if you're looking for support or would like to have a private trainer about assistive technologies, please let us know. We'll be more than happy to assist you and give you some training, even if you're a beginner. So just give us a call. You'll find all our contact details at the end of this episode. So for me, I'll say you thank you for listening and bye for now. Before the end of this podcast, I would like to say you thank you for your loyalty to this series of podcasts on assistive technologies. I would also like to thank our loyal collaborator. As a reminder, I would like to inform you that Canadialog will not provide free technical support on product presented during these shows and that are not sold directly by Canadialog. Please note that our podcasts are now available on our website, YouTube, iTunes, as well as on Victor devices by consulting the North American English suggested podcast list from Humanware. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can contact us via email at podcastwitness at kennydialogue.com that is P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S at C-A-N-A-D-I-A-L-O-G dot com or by phone on our toll-free number at 1-888-730-0003 again 1-888-730-0003 extension 555 extension 555 I also invite you to visit our website, which contains a lot of useful information at www.kennydialogue.com. You can also visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Thanks for listening.